Greetings and salutations, you beautiful creatures of this beautiful planet. Eric and Mark here with you as we roll onwards at this world championship. It's do or die time. Elimination games are here. Two big favorites on the day in BDS and GAM beginning their loser's bracket climb. And we're starting with the final hope of Europe. Final hope. They're the only European team that has played. <laughs> final hope in play-ins against DFM. And we knew the biggest mismatch was going to be in the top lane. Adam against Appa Men. And guess what? It was the biggest mismatch of the series. Who would have thought? Oh, the advantages picked up by Adam and by BDS in the top side. Absolutely guaranteed for this series. And it was one of those ones where, you know what? They actually didn't pick up as many as I thought they would have, given the disadvantage, the discrepancy between these two and what you're expecting. Uh, still, the control effort coming through from BDS this first game, there was no doubt, so as soon as you're hitting that summoner's rip, that it was going to be BDS in control. They were going to dictate how things were going to go pretty much from one minute onwards was what you saw from this game for BDS. And, you know, the first game was really slow. Uh, you know, it was like two kills, I think, at 15 or 16 minutes. There was definitely, you could feel the passiveness and weight of the moment for BDS like lose this and you're out like worlds your run is over so it felt a little tentative before things started warming up yes Adam had basically a 30 CS lead for the majority of this entire series and the big win is the croc Renekton second win of the tournament mark that win rates climbing back up uh, two and eight. I'm not so sure how I feel about it, but on the positive side, positive angle, the hopium angle for for y'all lizard Renekton fans, you can say 100% win rate on the day. That is a guarantee. It might be two and eight, but it's that one and oh on the day coming through. Thanks to Adam. And yes, it was, it took a little bit of time still, but you felt that control. You felt that presence that BDS carried around the map in this game had that type of uh, priority so many times when they would get to certain things. I think the other one that you got to be talking about in this first game is Shio in the jungle for BDS, what he was doing on this Ivor and how much that was helping the rest of his squad pop off, get that attack in there. Really thought that that Ivor was a difference maker. Yeah, and honestly, Shio was the difference maker in game two. On the Vi, it felt like he had steel it felt like he was playing against a bot he was so far ahead of him and all these plays and i know dfm because of all the issues behind the scenes the sub top laner coming in there weren't high expectations but individually i think you could still be disappointed in the performance out of both steel and aria because that twistana performance in game two that was that was a mouth like saying we were we specialize in talking about the LCS. We have seen many a Tristana Malphite. That is a certified one right there from Aria. It is extremely disappointing to see those two players struggle at this event and really not look up to that caliber, not only of the, what we've seen from them previously throughout this journey of DFM attending these international events to you know what we saw from them this year really is seemingly on that downward trend. Uh, as the year is closing out, it's both Steel and Aria not able to deliver those type of carry performances, especially Aria, that this was supposed to be the bounce back. You're back in Korea now, turn, you know, you've had this whole year in the LJL again, show everybody that this is the true Aria that you returned to form. This wasn't it. This looked a lot more like the Aria we saw with KT Rolls. Yeah, and this is, I think, the first actual Tristana mid game that we've seen after it was such a staple meta pick throughout the majority of the summer split. I know it's been banned a few times here at this World Championship, but not a great performance out of him. And now BDS, okay, they advance to the next round. They're going to be favorites against the Flying Oysters, but I'm still not feeling mega confident that they're going to 2-0 a much better power level team in the Flying Oysters. And when you're looking at that bot lane, okay, Crowdy got another pet to kill. Okay, yeah, he had a double kill when he face checks and gets three. But the laning phase side of things for both him and Mabrav is still definitely something that's been a little shaky so far at this event. It's one of those ones where, you know, it's a tough task trying to understand whether it's just the expectations are higher than what they're delivering or is it actually about where that performance is and you having those issues in this type of situation. 
thinking about that bot lane, looking at what they were up against and understanding and still respecting it, you had to have the advantages. You had to be able to do what you wanted to do. And really, for a lot of it, you do look at the top side, you look at the jungle, and all those things were doing it for BDS. It wasn't the bot lane dictating things and getting all that set there. Yes, even with those kills, even with that pentakill on the side, it's okay. But the problem is you need good to great to show us on this rift for BDS to get into that favorite type of category, especially moving into this next tier where we are taking on the Oysters. And listen, Harp on the Blitzcrank, he was finding angles, he was finding avenues to get DFM advantages. And if he's doing it, wait until Mr. Shao Si is pulling it out for the Flying Oysters, because that guy's at a different beast. So if I'm BDS, I'm, I'm not letting Blitzcrank through the entire series. And the, if the Oysters are doing their homework, they're making sure Adam's not getting Darius, they're making sure no Garen, those type of uh, targeted bands. If you're BDS, do that homework, making sure that you're taking away that type of Blitzcrank from the bot lane of these Oysters. You may be taking away the Jace from Jim in the mid lane. You're really got to be looking at these things if you are bds before the bds matchup again favorites disappointing start for gam against r7 similarly to the bds series a little bit slow getting things rolling in that first game but eventually you saw the marines do what they do best in the bcs and that is embrace the chaos how many times this series did you see a team fight you thought was over and Gam just keeps going. They keep pushing under a turret, even if it's going to be a one for one or a one for two. They do not stop fighting and that's them at their peak. So I was happy to see signs of that. Ah, oh, man, you know, it's like watching this guy out in this middle of a field with some water and he's kind of mucking it around. You're like, what's going on? What's this guy doing? Uh, you come back an hour later, he's got the mud party going on out there. You got to create the mud pit to bring everyone into that dirty fight with you that's what it felt like for the gigabyte marines in this series we're not fully back on the gigabyte marines fan train going all celebrations and everything levi to the max it's not quite there yet but it is building back up and i think this is much more so those signs of light that you saw from this team domestically you're seeing those glimpses here and hey you know what we just said lcs lcs supporters is a heck of a lot better than we saw tsm ever do at these international events where they show a little glimpse of what they can do i'm hoping that that is the cracking of the shell to show us the true gam esports on this stage game one bringing it right back into those fields and the big bounce back for me is in that bot lane because they got they got gapped uh against loud and they slater particularly was much better this series chuck up another pentakill that's right we already got three in play it so again in your pickums, you're already out. Anyone who hasn't gone three plus, catch you next year. We told you guys it was gonna be more than three, guaranteed. We already went through how many we it's had only this day year. There's four. No we're almost averaging four. one a day. And we're not even talking about the 200 years of Felios and the Zeres. This is just the Kaisas and the Zayas picking them up. Holy cow! All, all four games, it. by the way, was Kaisa versus Zaya today. Yeah, I hope, I hope you're very used to it by now because get comfortable with those two being those priority picks in the bottom lane. Uh, what you saw in this series, in this game from that bottom lane for Gam, from specifically for me, Slater, that's the key. These type of performances, that type of lethality, that type of pressure that you're able to create are necessary for this Gam team to create that environment, that pressure, that, you know, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And you panic and you make a mistake in that next team fight because you feel like you have to, all these things. That Gam brings you down, brings you down right into that mud pit and wrestles with you. Slater getting that type of kill pressure, getting that type of pop off is what helps create that for Gam. It's amazing how comfortable everybody looks on this Zaya pick right now, whether or not they even have a Recon alongside them. So for Gam, on to the next one. It is a rematch against Loud, which you know is going to be a little bit more personal for the BCS, especially when they see on the other side is a civil war waiting, waiting for them in a matchup against Team Wales. Oh, and I think this is so perfect because if there's any team that wants to get down into the mud and brawl with a squad like Gam, it could be loud. They absolutely are a squad that thrives on chaos, on this back and forth in a match. They find a way to get it done. As well, I'm looking at the motivations. How's the emotions feeling for both of these squads? You got Gam a little bit happier, a little bit of that bounce back, still got stuff to prove. 
to the level that they were in the VCS. And then you're looking at Loud, who a team that we have some expectations for, getting knocked down. Now, how do you prove yourself that, you know what? No, we are strong enough to push forth, to be this team, to fight our way out of play-ins. You got to prove it against the Gigabyte Marines again. And honestly, I think both these squads can be highly emotional when they're on the rift. I mean, obviously loud. You look at the CBL, CB Law where guys stand up from their chairs after a sick play and are yelling across the venue to the opposing team. And even Gam in their last matchup against Loud, the body language across the board did not look good for that squad. So however game one goes in this series, going to have huge implications. And the other thing is you're looking at the fans listening in live event at this LCK venue, and you've absolutely got a ton of Loud fans. Wherever you go, the Loud fans are there. And yeah, yeah they're Loud easy one to get on that one and then of course the marines yes they're also there the vcs fan base and they are loud and you know what the vietnamese fans are extremely proud of their teams they want the very best out of them they're going to motivate them i'm telling you this matchup has got a lot of things building it up than just what is the on paper match to matchup and it's right into the gauntlet for these playing squads that had to go through losers because they're right back on the rift tomorrow and right back are the winners on that sunday where we will decide who is advancing to that Swiss stage, and we will be back to break it all down then on the other side. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people, as always. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.